Anderton's left knee is heavily bandaged. Klinsman, Barmby. Still Barmby. Papescu. Played in again, meant for Barmby. Good cover, Unsworth. And that long clearance. Well, that was a contrast, wasn't it? Spurs, for the first time, just tried to probe and get their way through, and then David Unsworth made the interception, and from there, 18-yard box, it's ended up in Ian Walker's hand, and, and they don't mess around, they just turn the Spurs' defence immediately, and that's the problem. Spurs just haven't probably felt at the moment, certainly their forward players, that they've been able to get into this game at all. Graham Stewart fouled by Colin Calderwood. Everton's free kick halfway through the first half. The ball wasn't still when it was taken by Hinchcliffe. This is uh, Jackson. Right out just coming off his man up front, but a good challenge by Barnby. And the ball put through to him again by Howells. Unsworth at the moment is winning everything back there for Everton. This is Jackson. Right out. On the chest is the referee. Play on. Limpar. Right out again. Limpar. It's very sharp. It wasn't a bad return ball. Paul Rowder, of course, hadn't played recently and just didn't go for the second return pass. No, some people thought he was be out for the rest of the season right out, but he's made a sudden recovery. That's Sheringham to Klinsman. And that header by Calderwood is cleared by Nethercott. Sheringham with Watson now. Right out's header, Abbott's clearance. Oh, good touch play initially by Everton, and then Spurs scrambled their way into the tackle, and the ball was smuggled away by Howells, who was brought down by Watson. And it was Tottenham who were doing the strapping there in midfield. It was great hustling just before that by an Everton quartet, although in the end, Horn and Parkinson were so competitive, they tackled each other and that allowed Spurs to break. Well, Neville Southall looks out and sees five white shirts round the ball. central figure here and Howells and rolled across to Gary Mabbott oh and Southall and an orthodox save looked as if it must have taken some sort of deflection because Neville Southall started to go to his left and then used his feet to actually clear the ball but a double push across the, the sort of edge of the 18 yard box I'm surprised Gary Mabbott you wouldn't associate him normally with it the free kick from here but as you can say, hits it low. There's a lot of legs in there, but it just seen it late, obviously, and it's curling round, but he uses his feet, and it's effective. Yes, it also actually guided away from the two Tottenham players coming in, didn't he? This is Barmby. Stewart. Parkinson. It's a right old scrap in there. That was Barry Horn, who was the best, one of the best at that, <laughs> upended by David Howells. Fairly fearsome tackle from Joe Parkinson just before that on Nicky Barnby, and I think it was the follow-up from that that then uh, got penalised for David Howells. Yes, there's some real teeth in midfield today. This is Unsworth. Play on.
Dean Austin. Popescu, Anderton. Oh, on to Popescu from Sheringham and then to Barnby with Nethercott moving up as well. Anderton joins Klinsman in the centre. So does Sheringham. It's a good run by Barnby. Referee shook his head at the end as he went down. Tottenham win it back, Klinsman. Stewart for Everton. Right out. Hinchcliffe. Stewart. Hinchcliffe goes for the return. Austin, difficult one for a defender. In the old days, you could have passed back to your goalkeeper. Not now. Corner. Ablett, Watson and Jackson all come forward. Dave Watson! Well, Ian Walker's been top man, hasn't he? Gary Mabbitt is there, he's challenging, he's at full stretch, but Dave Watson just gets above him, and it's just the height for the keeper to make the save. And Big Dave is still in there now as Hinchcliffe goes right across to the other side. Gary Ablett's the player who's in front of Walker. said right in front of him did enough to save the situation well they're far harder aren't they from the right coming in swinging into the goal and that lip could only have been a hair's worth away I think from getting the touch that was the first poor one from Hinchcliffe and a relieved Nethercott got it away from the post free kick Jürgen Klinsmann <laughs> Walker's done well hasn't he what a solid start by the goalkeeper to this semi-final. He's got bodies to get through, not all in blue shirts either, it might be said. His own defenders have got to go in there too. Yeah. Klinsman, it went over Watson's head. Klinsman, Sheringham! I'm not sure Jürgen Klinsmann... <laughs> has enjoyed the semi-final up to now. The ball just bounces up, tries to knock it down, but it's an awkward one behind Sheridan. But, you know, it's, they're just looking for the scraps as well. Well, they've scored, what is it, between them this season? 45 goals, Klinsman 25, Sheringham 20. over and behind right out and this first FA Cup semi-final is half an hour old there's no score but there's plenty of excitement Dean Austin fouled by Andy Hitchcliffe Dean Austin's actually playing with a broken toe and had to have injections before the match Sheringham beaten by Unsworth. Nethercott, Jackson's header away. Now Limpar. Parkinson, a good run from midfield, number 18. Walker saw him coming. Everton supporter suggested his feet were in the penalty area, but his hands just went outside to collect it. The officials not interested. Klinsman, we tried to flick that on for Barnby. Header by Horn. Darren Anderton switching now to the left. Looking here for Sheringham. Unsworth. Misjudgment by Dean Austin lets in Graham Stewart. Paul right out, the only other man up with him is away to the right. Still Stewart. And there wasn't enough support for him, really. The others were a bit slow getting forward. Or maybe he was too quick for them. Here's Anderton. is 
it's uh, switching from one side to another, but he does have that problem, as you can see, on the left knee. Jackson. Klinsman, Sheringham, turned away from Watson. There aren't going to be that many opportunities for the, the duo to link up, and he turns Watson exceptionally well then. Goes for the chip, I think the strike would have been a better one, but it's easy after seeing it go over the crossbar. Good turn, though, to set up the actual shooting chance. He's got a good range of skills, Teddy Sheringham. Papescu, Unsworth. Stewart felt he was impeded by Mabbott, but again, Mr. Hart is allowing the game to flow. This is Papescu. Sheringham. Now Klinsman with his arm up on the far side. This is Anderton. Klinsman's moved inside now. Listen there! Sheringham. Mabbott sneaked up on the far side as well. This is Austin. Way by Dave Watson. That's Anderton. David Howes has slotted into the back four because Mabbott's gone on a little foray upfield. It's coming back now. Here's Austin. Klinsman. Watson. Limpar got a bit mixed up. And there goes Sheringham. On to Barnby's pass, but lovely cover. Smooth as you like from David Unsworth. And here's Stewart. Oh, and a shot surely for right at it. It comes across. Graham Stewart, a really good run. And Paul Rideout was the player in the centre. But not for the first time, Gary Mabbott saved Tottenham. Great defensive play there by Mabbott. Mistake by Hals, just tried to play out, he got himself in trouble, and Gary Mabbott saving the day. Jackson's header! Oh, it's in! Matt Jackson at the near post! Everton have taken the lead! Five minutes into the semi-final. The corner taken inevitably by Hinchcliffe. And Matt Jackson seems to glance that beyond Ian Walker. Well, it just clears Stuart Nethercott, doesn't it? Look, he's just got the wrong side of him. Jackson takes it. Nobody at the near post, and it's in the net. It's his second FA Cup goal. Jackson, he got the winner at Bristol City in an earlier round. But that one... Depending on what else happens today, he'll remember for a lot longer. It's exactly as we've said, though, on the set pieces. It, he puts him in at such pace, Andy Hinchcliffe. If you just get caught the wrong side and you're out of position and he gets the faintest of touches, that's what's going to end up more often than not. Celebrations on three sides of the ground. But you're always vulnerable when you've just scored a goal. Darren Anderton's going across now to take a corner for Tottenham. And Gary Mabbott has come forward. And so has Calderwood on the line. above Watson but on the post there Andy Hinchcliffe would have cleared it if necessary yes the man on the line had it covered so did the referee it seemed there one goal down and it must
must be said on the evidence of that first 35 minutes that Joe Royal's team thoroughly deserve their lead. seven minutes because they have always just been that extra half a yard ahead of the Spurs players. The other factor Trevor is that Klinsman hasn't had a look in so far. Well none of the forward players, I mean they do rely a lot on the supply from the back and midfield but of course they've been hustled so much the quality of that service has been affected. He was beaten there by Unsworth was Klinsman. into Jackson a bit there, the ball's come back off Watson, the referee will have to look at that. Nicky Barnby just frustrated by the fact that he didn't win the first challenge. Then I thought left a leg a little late and I think that's why the referee who may take his eye off it wants to talk to his linesman on the far side, Tony Leak. And I think a yellow card, if it comes out, will come to Nick Barnby. I just thought, Trevor, that when the ball had gone, he left the foot in. Well, he did, it was because he didn't get the first division. He thought he'd just pace-wise got beyond Matt Jackson. Then Jackson won possession, and here you see after the follow-through, I and mean, he's not made any contact, but it was dangerous. And uh, certainly, in the end, it was a yellow card. Well, the linesman couldn't have been closer, could he? <laughs> he almost tackled the linesman as well. Anyway, it's a yellow card for Barnby. forward by Jackson, on the chases, right out. Just in case anybody does join the semi-final a little late, on a Sunday, let me tell you that the Everton goal was scored by Matt Jackson, the right back, from a corner, on 35 minutes. If you've just come in, that's the situation. It's a free kick now to Tottenham. And it's going to be taken by Dean Austin. This is Popescu. We're going into the last five minutes of the first half. still to concede a goal in the FA Cup this season. Forward by Austin. Ablett. Oh, it's a good piece of play by Joe Parkinson. But Calderwood stepping in across right out. Barnby. Unsworth having a splendid first half for Everton. Limpar. Forward by Jackson. Free kick. Now it's on Stewart. Ball taken. No, no, too quickly. Referee wasn't happy with where it was taken from. And uh, for this one, Everton play it shorter. This is Ablett. Parkinson to Horn. The target is right out. The header was by Mabbott. This is Anderton. Offside, Clinton. In may 
making that last clearance. I think Gary Mabbott's uh, on the ground there, Trevor. Yeah, he's holding the, the back of his uh, leg, whether it's his ankle or what. Uh, certainly the trainer coming on now, but what, with three or four minutes to go before half-time, Spurs and Jerry France have got to think of some way or other that they're going to get into this game, because, you know, it has passed them by, where, and he's probably thinking, well, he's got Ronnie Rosenthal on the bench. At what stage does he introduce it? But the problem at the moment, they haven't been able to get sufficient numbers forward, because as soon as Everton win possession, they knock it round and they turn their defence and because everyone then has to work back and so it means Klinsman and Sheringham have been a little bit uh, drained of the, the sort of supply that he used to and they had a lot of support and it's been such a disruptive first half for them. Well, they've come from behind in the FA Cup before this season, Tottenham. So there's a long way to go yet. Supporters from Merseyside, you can hear, with good reason. Watson with the free kick. That was never caught, and on by Barnby. This is showing with just Clinton ahead of him. Two defenders cover it. Watson. Clinton. Jackson. Howells, Barnby, Sheringham, oh, we would have hoped to have done better from there. Well, they battled away on the corner of the penalty area, it's a good little pullback by Barnby, it's just too high for Sheringham, he can't get overneath, it looks a sort of poor header, but it was too high for him really, he tried to just get above it and knock it down, you can see it's hanging there, tantalisingly, but it's too high to actually keep down, and a bit behind. Yes, he was stretching, wasn't it? But it was a nice little cross from Nick Barnby. <laughs> Gary Ablett, offside, Graham Stewart. against Klinsman. Jackson. That's good skill from Graham Stewart, it really is. This is Hinchcliffe, the former Chelsea player there for Everton, having a good afternoon up to now. Here he is again, and he's trying to get Hinchcliffe through against Anderton, who's now called into defensive duty. And it's a goal kick. Graham Stewart and Anders Lindtry have done exceptionally well. Sorry to step across, but there's a yellow card here, and I know why it is. Hinchcliffe kicked the ball high into the crowd, Trevor, when the ball went over the line for a goal kick in frustration. And I saw Robbie Hart coming over and thought, well, in the current mandate about descent, that is technically a yellow card offence. A waste, isn't it, though, to get it to that? But certainly Lindtry, I think, and Stewart have been very, very good. The two lads who can beat defenders, they've held it up, done a little bit on the ball, and sort of got on the end of these long balls through. So stoppage time in the first half as Barnby picks it up for Tottenham, but not for long, which is right out. And now it's Stewart, and Anders Limpar has made an inspired run through the centre, and right out spun away to the far side. Stewart, in fact, didn't see either of them. That's a dreadful waste. Anders Limpar made a great run there, an early ball from Graham Stewart, and he would have been clear. He held his hands up, Stewart, to acknowledge that, in fact, when the play broke down. This is Austin for Tottenham. What a good tackle by Barry Horn, the Welsh captain. Hinchcliffe's hurt.
king of the corners, Andy Hinchcliffe. You can't say Everton don't deserve to be at the very least of one goal up at half time. Well, right on cue, there is the whistle, and they do deserve to be one up. Of that, there is no question. Matthew Jackson, who uh, curiously was Leeds born, so uh, <laughs> fitting place for him to score, has given Everton the lead in the first half of the semi final with a near post header with the applause ringing out from the Merseyside fans and Tottenham wandering off, looking a shade bewildered. Their game plan has been all mixed up by Everton and at half-time, they're a goal behind. Hello, John, thank you very much. At the moment, we're light years away from that dream <laughs> final of Spurs against Manchester United, Everton. That's right, but I've been sensational, you know, they've defended well, they've attacked well, they've made all the chances, two points. Can Everton keep going at the same pace for another 45 minutes? And what are Tottenham made of? You know, we know they've got the class, we know they've got the quality. Have they got the heart to come back into this game mm. and get to the cup final? We've seen nothing really from the big stars of Tottenham, have we, Jim? No. Have been allowed to play, I guess. No, they haven't. I mean, Everton has been, you know, that was an excellent half from their point of view. They can't do any better, I would think, than that. And, and that's why, you know, they're leading. Yeah. But Spurs, I think, what showed was fear. I think they were frightened about the Nethercott situation and they were expected to win the match. You remember when the draw took place, we all sort of said, oh, well, look, that's Manchester United's first final. And, and the fear of losing m makes you unsteady in your approach to the game, plus the worries about team selection and power in the air, which they hadn't got so much at the back. Um, you put fear into them, and that's showing in all of their play today. Well, I've never seen Limpa look quite so effective. He's a good player, and I think if you get the ball early to him, Jimmy said Nethercott coming in, playing left back, he really doesn't know if he's coming or going. The way a, a flat back four operates, he's committed when the ball's on the other side to going around the back of his centre backs. Limpar's just holding back, and if ever can switch it quickly, he's pretty tasty when he gets the ball at his feet. Now, before we started, you mentioned a man called Hinchcliffe. Hello. Me? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, yes. the, the, the corners are very, very difficult to defend against. I think he's had eight or nine, he's hit one bad one in. Uh, the goal, again, it's a variation, the pace and the power. Nethercott gets the wrong side of Jackson. I can't understand why they haven't got anybody in the post. You've got to have men in both near post and back post. Yeah, in fact, it's something that managers and coaches disagree on. Some of them have a man on both posts and some have one post. As you can see, Spurs have got the one lounging at the far post while the ball creeps in. Unstoppable, really, by the keeper from the position keep, that he took up on the near post. Keeper's been excellent, but he's got he no chance. He almost got that one, actually. Yeah. It's just so difficult to defend against. You need a bit of luck. They didn't get it there. Great, great set play, it really is. Yeah. And um, I think in that situation, you've got to pray. You know, he's just hitting them in with so much pace and power that you've got to get a break. He's so yeah. dangerous with that in-swinger, particularly from that From the right-hand yeah. side. But yeah. the, the point is... You've got to try and keep them out there. You've got to try and, and not make sure that they get corner kicks. Now, Everton have had some like eight or nine. Well, that's far too many. And it shows how much they're in front in this particular yeah. match. Well, Spurs had one shortly after that goal, didn't they? And there was a different sort of... Um... Well, there was a man on the post on, on this occasion. There it is. Sheringham wins it at the near post again. A great header, that. Look, beats the keeper. But also, if it had been closer, uh, there is one man on the post again, but it happened to be on the right post. An actual fact. They haven't got anybody in the near post no, yet. No, they haven't. But see, this is a value of having somebody in the post because if that goes in on target, Hinchcliffe's there to get off the line. What you're doing is giving the keeper a bit of protection, having two men either side of him. Yeah. But that is an injustice, really, to say that that's just the difference what happened at those two corners, you know, between the two teams. Because no, there is a far out Everton it could have yeah. been two or three goals but out. The Tottenham aren't out of it. You know, oh, no, no. Everton have only got one goal. If Tottenham can get back in and play the way they're capable of, they can come back into this game. But sometimes, semi-final of the cup, it's very, very difficult to get it down and play it. Well, Mr Francis will be changing things around, I suspect, as we speak, and we'll find out a bit more about that in just a moment. I, I wouldn't like to... to be in the Spurs dressing room at half-time when Mr Francis is there. A few <laughs> things thrown up, I think. OK, <laughs> well, we'll have more about this uh, in just a moment or two. But first, let's look back at um, yesterday's Premiership games. Gary Richardson rounding them up for us. It's been a dreadful 1995 for Norwich City. They've collected just eight points from a possible 42 and now have just five games remaining to try and avoid the drop to Division One. 
trying to get himself in front and then behind you and seen to get a tug and that's a penalty he was just far too lively for the Norwich skipper it will be Peter Beardsley it's 1-0 to Newcastle Ottinger though Lee Beardsley Pieces that only Peter Beardsley can score. Bourne forced off the ball by Lee. Now he's got three ahead of him here, Lee. And Kitson is onside. Paul Kitson. 3 0. Kevin, there hardly seems to be a month go by where I, I don't read you saying that's Peter Beardsley's best ever goal for us. Has, has he done it again? Yes. <laughs> They're all good goals, Peters. Even the penalties, I, you know, I'm a big fan of his anyway, as everybody knows. Forrest had won their previous five matches, scoring 19 goals, including seven the previous week. Early on, it looked like they might be in for another goal-scoring spree. Collymore took it off Bishop. He's got stone wide if he chooses to use him. Oh, what a thumper. Good flick on. Cotty down to Hughes. And it's free kick against Cooper. Hughes his body to make it very difficult for Hughes and West Ham with a free kick now the left foot of Julian Dix well struck fabulous goal and West Ham have opened the scoring and it's always been a possibility Pierce and Chettle got in each other's way Roy to knock it in again that's awkward good header there was a moment in the first few minutes when you were quite a long way out of goal and you had the confidence to, to try a shot, which McCloskey did very well to tip over. And, for, and at that moment, it looked as though you were going to pick up where you left off the week before. Yeah, very much so. I think that um, myself and Brian Roy thrive at running at players. And, um, you know, big Ludo, he's got hands like dinner plates. He, um, the shot, you know, hit it from 25 yards. And to be fair, I think it would have beaten a lot of keepers. Uh, but he stuck his uh, left hand out and tipped it round the bar. If Arsenal continue in their present groove, they face an anxious few weeks. Yesterday's defeat was their fifth in six league matches and leaves them dangling dangerously close to the relegation zone. Andrew Impey set Rangers on the way with a goal after 27 minutes. Arsenal might have drawn level through Ian Wright, but unfortunately for him, the post intervened. Arsenal manager Stuart Houston had asked for the match to be switched to today, allowing his team extra recovery time following Thursday's European tie. They certainly looked jaded as Trevor Sinclair created a delightful opening for Kevin Gallon. I don't want to make excuses, said Houston, but our case wasn't made any easier by not moving the fixture. Queen's Park Rangers' third of the afternoon saw Gary Penrice strike the post. Carl Reddy was the first to react, and he scored his first of the season. Arsenal then sneaked a consolation goal a minute from time through their captain Tony Adams. The Rangers manager Ray Wilkins said afterwards, even if Arsenal hadn't played in the week, we'd have still beaten them 3-1. Leicester City now have only a mathematical chance of surviving after their 23rd league defeat of the season. Wednesday supporters, after the humiliating defeat against Forest, were hoping for a better afternoon. And it was, all thanks to Guy Whittingham's header in the 38th minute, following Peter Atherton's cross. Wednesday manager Trevor Francis said, I'm aiming for 50 points, and we've now broken the ice. Well, following that result, Wednesday are on 46 points with five matches to play, their 10th, and QPR, who we saw a moment ago, are up to 9th. There's no change in the top four positions. At the bottom, Leicester are now seemingly a lost cause, while Arsenal are now five points off the relegation area following that defeat at Queen's Park Rangers. Thanks, Gary. Well, here, of course, it's all about the cup, and if you're just joining in, Everton leading Spurs by that goal to nil, Matt uh, Jackson, and all over Tottenham at the moment, as we say. Yeah, they quite conceivable have been three or four up and been all over. Mm. I mean, they, they have attacked very well. They've had maybe five or six players playing to absolute top form. Unsworth at the back's been terrific. Yeah. You know, he's played well, Limpar's played well. You've got the Hinchcliffe corners. What more do you need? 
It's a good job that Ian Walker is sharp in the, in the Tottenham goal. He's played exceptionally well. Yeah. yeah. Let's look at Limpar's chances early on in, in that uh, half. Well, the ball comes in from the left-hand side. Nethercott comes in too early. Both central defenders miss out. It comes to Limpar. He's a tight angle. Good first touch. On target. And a magnificent save from Walker. Yeah. On this one, actually, I thought it was the one moment when Nethercott did well in holding off him and tenting him to shoot because there was a man on the outside, and from that distance, it was a good save, but it would have had to have been an extraordinary shot to beat the keeper from there. But um, Hinchcliffe has played this, this, this great role for them in the first half, but it seems a fairly simple ploy just to hit good corners, Alan. No, no, with the pace and power. I, th I keep going back to the, the variation. You know, he hits them near post, and then he'll hit them around about the keeper's head, and then he'll hit them far post, and they're so difficult to defend against. It just needs a touch from attacker or defender, and it's in the back of the net. You but don't really need a, a yeah. lot of height in there okay. because they're coming in so quickly. Yeah, but against a team like Everton, you need to have enough players who can defend in the air well. Otherwise, you're really in trouble. That's the point. Mm. Yeah. Let's have a look at some of the examples of those uh, corners from him. Well, this comes from the left-hand side. This is a magnificent chance. Paul Ryder leaves his marker. Free header, and you'd be expecting him to do better. Great chance. But he, he was unchallenged, wasn't he? Here's, here's Ablett now, another one up, you know, central defender through his career. Uh, no problem at all in the air. He loves it, getting up there. Uh, and look at the scrambling and everything going on there. Goalkeeper not doing it. Ablett's but, caused but all a that magnificent problem. corner in. Huh? It's so hard to defend against. And this is a one near post again. Now, Matt Jackson isn't brilliant in the air. And it's coming with power and pace. And it just needs a little touch, and it's in the back of the net. I'm, I agree with you, the defender isn't brilliant, but the, the corner kick is so good. Well, in fact, it's, there's no way that you can defend against a near post corner like that when the, when the ball's met on the near post by a man running out. I mean, if it flicks in and there's an empty spot in the goal, it's going to I think, in the evidence of the first half, if Duncan Ferguson had been playing, been all over. In two or three, maybe. Yeah. Easy. This boy Hinchcliffe, where's he sort of cut? He was at Manchester City. He was at Manchester City, and then he was on the side when Joe Royal came back, and nobody, no, nobody knew about these corner kicks and set plays. And credit to Joe Royal because he said, you just take everyone and hit them in with power and pace, and he's been doing that. It's been sensational. Absolutely sensational. Now, Ray Stubbs has got Sol Campbell down there with him, who Spurs could have done with today, I would have thought. The guys of Stern are saying Spurs could have done with you in that first half, but what's been happening in the Spurs dressing room? Well, uh, Jerry's going mad, you know, uh, we're just uh, dropping up too deep, you know, we're not getting a so second you know, knockdown as anything like, you know, uh, we've got to put more determination into the game, really. It just seems those Spurs haven't started yet, Sol. Yeah, you know, uh, we're a bit, a bit lax and a bit loose here and there, passes, but, you know, there's second half to come, you know, we're going to... Uh, dig in and uh, you know all the lads are going to chip in together and just get our tackles in really and push up second balls and uh, we just you know all together like you know the, say the back the back four we a bit too deep i'm sure jerry francis is far from happy what do you think now is the most important thing for spurs in the second half determination you know uh, we've got to go out there with the right frame of mind and uh, just hold it together you know everyone's got to stick together you know and uh, hopefully we can nick one i'm sure you'll give credit to everton because they've really taken the game to you yeah, they, they, they know, uh, back for you know, say Unsworth, he's done well, you know, he's won a lot of headers. But, you know, they, not everyone's going to make mistakes, so hopefully they can make a mistake in the second half and uh, we can, uh, you know, get a goal. You have to start the second half well just to set the agenda that you've started again, as it were. Yeah, you know, you, you can't go out in the second half and uh, start thinking, you know, it's, it's just going to happen, you know, it's the seventh final. Uh, we just got to go get through and uh, you, don't, you don't care how you play, it's just getting through. It's a real battle now. Are you still confident you're going to be going to Wembley? Obviously, you know, you, you've got to be optimistic, you know, you can't say, you know, lie down, you know, we're just going to go out there and uh, see what happens. Jerry Francis is still going, man. Thanks for talking to us, then. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> it's not just effort, though, that's required from Tottenham. They've got to something, turn something yeah, around. Yeah, I think this. he's right when he says a little bit more determination. I think that the, the famous four, we've got to see more from them. Anderson, Sheringham, Klinsman, Barnby. It's all very pretty, pretty. This is the semi-final of the Cup. Everton are... 110% committed, they're getting in quick. I think they've got to show more resilience. I mean, Klinsman hasn't been in the game. We've got to see more from him. Exactly. You were making a point just now while the videotape was running about the refereeing in this match, Jimmy. There were one or two yeah. inconsistencies for you. I I'm not against a referee allowing the play to flow as this referee has done, but there have been offences committed, I think, when he's waved play on. 
Uh, and I think that's why Barnby got his name taken, because he was fouled before the linesman drew attention and to he his... retaliated. It was retribution. He didn't retaliate against a player. He mm. went in, you know, like a ton of bricks for the ball. You see that incident? He, he actually contacted the ball, but it looked like, you know, violent conduct, and, and the linesman got him a yellow card. But in the lower leagues, if you watch that in the, in the other divisions, you'll find that match, that first half, I reckon would have resulted in five or six yellow cards, and it's that inconsistency from one match to the other that I think puzzles players, and certainly puzzles the people who watch the game. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Alan. Spurs have got it all to do here. Can they turn this one round? Everton lead by a goal to nil. Let's rejoin Trevor and John. Thanks very much, uh, Des. And uh, having listened to that discussion, Trevor, it does occur to me that um, two things, really. Jerry Francis is renowned as something of a strategist, so he will have said a few things uh, in the dressing room at half-time. But Everton are 18th on that caption in the Premiership. And uh, it, in a sense, every game they've been playing has been an FA Cup semi-final. Well, they've had a couple of little mishaps in recent league games, uh, even the one against Blackburn, where they gave them a two-goal scar and then pounded them for 80 minutes. They could have got something from that. Uh, so I, th I think, you know, generally speaking, that seeing in this first 45 minutes, they're too good to go down. But you know, if they get to a cup final in the spirit of that and the buoyancy, I don't think they they will go down playing like this. Well, they're now playing from left to right, and here's Popescu for Tottenham to Klinsman on towards Barnby. And you'd expect Tottenham to start strongly, sharing him into Klinsman, not quite, and away by Ablett the second time. Here's Stewart. Horn, Limpar. He's driven that fairly optimistically, but Dean Austin didn't make proper contact with Stewart. Up, up alongside him comes Andy Hinchcliffe. Right out to the only player in the middle for Everton. This is Ablett, Stewart. Goes again, return from Hinchcliffe to Stewart. Right out on the near post, not far away. Well, it was a good counter-attack again by Everton, and uh, Spurs went to sleep. No one took the runner. Fortunately, as the cross came in, Ian Walker was just able to get a hand on it. But I do suspect that uh, Spurs need to support the front two far more. Sheringham. Barmby! Now, Mr Hart there was a factor in that. The Jürgen Klinsmann appeared to be fouled, but the referee, in my opinion, played a good advantage because that was a case where he could let the game go on. Spurs had possession. Klinsman feels he was knocked about a bit there by Unsworth. Oh, arm round the neck, in fact, wasn't it? No doubt about that. But it runs on, you see. The referee thinks, well, Tottenham have got a shooting chance here, which ultimately they have, because Barnby comes into the picture and picks it up from Sheringham. We're taking up the point what Jimmy said at half-time. There's nothing to stop him booking him once the ball's gone out of play. No, there isn't. Here's Calderwood. Anderton. Sheringham. Offside against right out coming back. Mr. Hart was the referee the night that um, Jurgen Klinsmann collided, I use that word advisedly, with Mark Bosnich. And that's a shove by Teddy Sheringham on Dave Watson. Referee had a word with Sheringham. Everton took the free kick behind his back and he wants it retaken. So the conversation between Klinsman and Mr Hart will not be the first one they've had. Although I think the night at Villa, Jürgen Klinsman was uh, too concussed to have a conversation. Here's right out. Horn. Now Barnby is sharing him, spins away to the right. Unsworth. Mabbott. Watson. Calderwood. This boy Unsworth's played for England under 21s. He looks to me like an international in the making. I, 
endorsed with Alan Hansen said at half time he's looked absolutely outstanding back there yeah, he's got good left foot as well his distribution in possession is is good although you know the way that they play they tend to hook it forward uh, and sometimes a little bit haphazardly well that's Gary Mabbott who has just seen that one to safety he's uh, a player far beyond his years David Unsworth only 21 The flag's up there, there was a, a, a latter offside. Everton fans mocking the Tottenham supporters because it's the first time they think they've heard the song today. Well, this FA Cup, sponsored by Littlewoods Pools, has really, in my view, the based on the games I've seen, risen to new heights this season. And uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to predict anything in a game like this because semi-finals have proved in the past that the unexpected will happen. And here comes Graham Stewart. As Limpar is trying to make ground down this side, it's a good enough cross, but picked out by Walker. Jackson. I suppose the sponsors would be uh, suitably pleased if Everton got, got, got to the final, but that's just in passing. This is uh, right out to Parkinson. And here comes Gary Ablett, who himself has got another Merseyside connection, having played in the final for Liverpool. Here's Klinsman. Striding forward, Jika Papescu. Haven't seen much of him in that position, Trevor. I think that's going to be the key if Spurs are going to get him back into this. One of the two central defenders, Howes or Popescu, has got to start to go beyond. I was thinking Howes has been pulled quite over to this left-hand side to help out Stuart Nethercott. It might be an idea to try and put Barnby through the middle and so because he likes to get beyond the front two. But somebody has to be joining closer to Klinsman and Sheridan to, to occupy the, the Everton defenders who at the moment are, are coping quite comfortably. Joe Parkinson picked his way through nicely there but uh, couldn't quite find right out and that's a rather lazy piece of play by Darren Anderton who lost the ball Harry Horn and Joe Parkinson well, was put up the decision by Parkinson on Popescu indirect free kick but uh, forward by Howes Klinsman Anderton, Sheringham running on, Unsworth. But no one following up to pick up the pieces. That's where I'm sure Jerry Francis is getting frustrated. The ball fell loose on the 18-yard box and there were six men back still on the halfway line. Well, Unsworth was carrying that well, but uh, Dean Austin intercepted the pass ultimately. And Everton could be one right at the back here. Jurgen Klinsmann sees the opportunity. And Unsworth is nowhere near him, but Watson is good enough to hold the fort because the other central defender is still making his way back. And he's still not really made it. Klinsman. Good ball, that. It was Hinchcliffe who swung it wide to Limpar. Running at Stuart Nethercott. Two in the middle for Everton. Right out goes near post. Referee says goal kick. 
That's what Everton do well there. They've got three great left footers uh, to find Limpar there. Unsworth in the middle, Gary Ablett left back. And of course Hinchcliffe on the left of midfield and they switch play and it goes to Limpar so quickly before they can get tight on him and that's when he runs at the defence. Here's Graham Stewart. And Barry Horn's making a run forward ominously. It's Stewart! certain fans came on to celebrate and Graham Stewart here follows up a right out shot which Walker beats out but right out who had a goal wiped out or an effort wiped out seconds earlier this time is the instigator of the second Everton goal he shoots Walker saves and look at Graham Stewart he's only got to tap the ball in the net well, it was a giveaway, wasn't it, from Spurs' point of view. They're losing possession like that. Two against one, right out through. Walker made a good save, actually, on the first one. But Stewart, again, picking up the pieces. They got away with it just a minute or two before with the offside, but not a second occasion now. Of course, they did come back against Southampton, but this one is, I think, an even taller order. And I suspect, though, Ronnie Rosenthal has got to be introduced. I tell you what, if Ferguson and Barlow hadn't been missing, Stewart might never have played here. Two nil to Everton. Yes, they did come from two down against Southampton, and they did bring on Ronnie Rosenthal, so it won't be long. Who would you take off? That's the question. Well, I think you'd have to take one of the two central midfielders off and. Uh, Certainly, then I would say stick Barnby in that middle area, support in the front two, and bring Rosenthal out wide. Look at that ball again. That's Unsworth to Limpar. Everton are playing some stuff now. Right out. Matty Jackson's gone right up into the middle, the right back here. It's still Limpar. This is Klinsman. Barry Horn, free kick to Tottenham. alternative is of course to, to take young Stuart Nethercott off who struggling a bit at left back and switch one of those two more experienced central midfielders half and half there. But wait first was a free kick with Calderwood and Mabbott both going forward, Howells to take. Sheringham's in there. Popescu hesitated a moment, right out saw him and volleyed the ball clear for Everton. Graham Stewart. Rarely seen a disallowed effort followed so quickly by a goal that was. Parkinson. There goes Stewart again. He's loving this role today, the former Chelsea man. Missed out in the sense after the cup final last year, of course. He moved. Here's Hinchcliffe. Limpar. Curled it a little bit away from right out. But look, at, there's no one supporting the front two. Uh, you know, Spurs are almost playing into Everton's hand. They're, you know, they're so deep, look, they're getting bypassed all the time, Spurs. That, they've got to change it soon.
just wonder what's going through the mind of, well, obviously, Jerry Francis, but also Joe Royal, his clinsman, because don't forget this time last year, or not this time, but on the same day, he was in the lead with Oldham before Mark Hughes changed everything. This is Barnby trying to change things for Tottenham. And Anderson comes up outside him, Jürgen Klinsmann. Good block. And Parkinson's clearance, Mabbott. twice lost semi-finals with Oldham. This was the mistake, look. Just got away with the disallowed goal and goes straight to riot out. Still bad defended, you shouldn't get called out like that, but it was the goalkeeper's mistake, tried to retrieve it, and 2-0 now, an uphill task. Same thing, bad kick by Southall, Klinsman in. Unsworth there, what's Southall doing here? Well, he knew. Right out. Hinchcliffe. An hour gone in the semi-final at Elland Road. Everton 2, Tottenham 0. by Popescu, a little lovely touch by Klinsman, Sheringham, Nicky Barb is in the centre waiting, and Everton, Unsworth in fact, get the ball away, as far as Hinchcliffe anyway. Anderton, floated for Klinsman, oh and Southall, with away. Barbie came late, but that's when you need the more numbers in the penalty area. It was a good cross, a loose ball bobbling in front of the goal, and it was again an Everton player got to it first. Klinsman again, he's causing problems. Sheringham's in there. Oh, look at the penalty as the yes. Sheringham went over, and the referee's given a penalty. Everton protest. Sheringham fell, was pushed. Bundled, whatever you feel about it, it's in by Barnby, it's on by Klinsman. Now watch Teddy Sheringham, he goes up. Oh, well, it looked a softish one to me, David Watson, but a penalty it is. The referee is waving away more protests, and Jurgen Klinsman, Watson's gone across to have another word with the referee. Well, it's an amazing decision. I, I just. Dave Watson's gone for the ball. And certainly Teddy Sheridan sort of almost made a back for Dave Watson and never a penalty for as far as I'm concerned and what a turning point this could be. It's a soft one that, but the fact of the matter is the referee has given it and it's Klinsman against Southall. Will it be the first goal that Everton have conceded in the FA Cup this season? and sprints back to the halfway line. Good effort by Southall to stop it. He went the right way, I think you'll find here. But the power of Klinsman's shot, yes, right in the corner, beautifully struck. That was a good penalty. Remember, he missed one against Liverpool recently, so it might have been at the back of his mind in the league, but uh, he didn't worry, did he? Took it, took the responsibility, but, I mean, it's a lifeline given to Spurs. There's no way for me that was a penalty. Well, it'll be a hotly debated decision, that, without any doubt. 
Collingwood is down. It's changed the course of this semi-final for the time being. 63 minutes gone, 2-1. Everton take a quick throw in, Graham Stewart. David Watson, <laughs> seeking some sort of retribution, goes forward for the throw. Now the heads up, now the Everton fans appeal. Nothing given, Adlett. Parkinson. Limpar. Beats one but can't beat two, and Klinsman, who I must say had, had a good ten minutes prior to that, suddenly He's very much in the game. Appeals for offside, no flag. Nethercott. delayed any substitution for 10 minutes anyway the penalty I'm sure Ronnie Rosenthal would have had the entrance on the half an hour to go but uh, now Jerry Francis decides well let's leave it for a few more minutes now we've got one back yes you saw the two managers in quick succession there and they can't plan anything like that happening it's uh, what makes football I suppose the unpredictable game it is when you get a penalty which came very much out of nothing and uh, Spurs had a lifeline as you said Watson to take the free kick for Everton, meantime. Limpar. Sheringham. Darren Anderson struggling to get up with Jürgen Klinsmann here. Unsworth. Scoops it in. Out to Howells. Now Graham Stewart. And Everton. Oh, that's a good piece of play. My goodness me, it is. <laughs> Joe Parkinson uh, showing a lot of skill on the ball. This is Anders Limpar. Stewart. Limpar again. And here's Parkinson. Parkinson, he has passed the ball around well today, Joe Parkinson. This is uh, Stewart. That was good control football by Everton. Uh, they've just sort of lost their way for the last few minutes after the shock of that penalty, but that sort of bit of possession would have done them a lot of good. A stake by Unsworth, not taken advantage of by Klinsman. team that were not in the FA Cup until December, who looked out of it when they were 2-0 down at Southampton, who were 2-0 down here, are suddenly still in with a shout. Stewart. The black handball Mavic referee said play on, and he said play on again. <laughs> Anders Limpar. Calderwood should see Stewart off here. Given away by Dean Austin to ride out. Run back well by Anderson. Popescu starts a run from midfield. Ride out's down injured. Spurs with Sheringham. Popescu again. Klinsman. And Popescu. And Barnby coming up on the outside. Klinsman. Sheringham! Well, while all that's been happening, Paul Rideout is lying prostrate in the other half of the field. Well, it looked like a good tackle by Darren Anderson, but he's in a lot of pain here, isn't he? Uh, 
whether he's wrapped his ankle or just hurt his knee again remains to be seen but uh, at the moment it doesn't look as if he's going to carry on unfortunately well they're calling for a stretcher and we may we may be seeing the end of ride out because of this Anderton stretches to take the ball in all fairness that wasn't a foul tackle but ride out went down with a lot of uh, with a painful expression on his face and having been out for so long with that knee one hopes it's not the same injury but uh, Les Helm is on the ground there with him and he's in bags of pain and Joe Royal may have to think about uh, Daniel Anacacci, uh, Trevor. Well, that would be the, the definite substitution. Um, it's always a problem now. They don't want to move him too quickly. But it certainly, it looked as if his, his leg, his leg, his leg just got wrapped underneath him and uh, as he went down, it seemed as if it twisted and it was an awkward fall, wasn't it? Well, Joe's a worried man at the moment. They were two up and sailing a few minutes ago. The waters have got very choppy for Everton. <laughs> There's a bit of seasickness among their supporters at the moment because uh, not only is, are they going to have a player carried off, but when it restarts, it'll be a corner to Spurs. He wants a signal, Joe, from the physio. Do we give it five minutes? Trevor Brooking shaking his head, but let's just stay with the play because referee Hart will resume the game with a corner to Tottenham. Oh, and Klinsmann's climbing. Bambi! Oh, it struck an Everton player. I think it was that man Unsworth again. <laughs> right out receiving attention on the far side of the field. Everton down to 10. 20 minutes to go. 2-1. Side, Graham Stewart, he's got to play a lone role up there at the moment. But I think Amakachi's got to come on, yes. They've given him a signal from the far side, Joe Royal. Rideout's not coming back. And the Nigerian, who only last week made his first starting appearance since Joe Royal's first match, is now in the action in an FA Cup semi-final. Daniel Amakachi, the three million pound man. So we have a World Cup player from overseas in each attack now well Ferguson suspended Barlow injured right out off no luck for Everton with strikers is there Most of you know that extra time is scheduled in the FA Cup semi-finals. And as Paul Rideout hobbles sadly away, Tottenham will be hoping to force in the remaining 18 minutes an extra period. Amakachi up against Mabbott. No disperse. Well, it's good to see Paul Rideout walking along there, so injury not quite as bad as might have been feared. And he might uh, still play a part in their premiership relegation battle but a chance for Daniel Amakachi to clinch matters and uh, make himself an instant hero it hasn't been easy for him has it since the World Cup no he needs to do for Everton what Yeboa is doing for Leeds whose normal games are played here here's uh, indeed where Yeboa scored a hat-trick on this ground earlier this week Popescu Nethercott. Howells. Up on the far side, Dean Austin. Hinchcliffe has to make, oh, a desperate challenge. Didn't get it. Austin's cross, offside. Flagger, Klinsman. Rideout is leaving the field on this side to a tremendous ovation from the Everton supporters gathered around the uh, dugout area. Anna 
Akachi. Now, how easily can he fit into the game? That's the question. It's uh, <laughs> Mabad who's taking no chances with him. chance of perhaps cutting one over the keeper well Amakachi it looked as if he's doing everything right and then he beat himself didn't he <laughs> and then goes back to Horn and Limpar to the right was in acres of space but Spurs I still I don't think they're doing enough going forward at the moment I, I'm a bit surprised we've got probably with stoppages still 20 minutes left that uh, Ronnie Rosenthal hasn't made the entry we thought he would yeah they got a bit fortunate there against Limpar Howells, Austin. Some viewers do join us late on a Sunday afternoon, particularly with a kickoff time like this, so I'll just refresh your memory on the goals, Everton went 2-0 up, Matt Jackson in the first half, Graham Stewart in the second, and a debatable penalty converted by Jurgen Klinsmann has put Tottenham back into some sort of contention. For the moment, it's a free kick to Everton. Amakachi, what a flick, Stewart! Good flick, but uh, not sure if it was a shot or a cross. Ended up with neither. News on Paul right out. He twisted his knee, and there was no possibility of him continuing. Now then, Sheringham to Barnby. Danger. A shout from the hopeful Tottenham fans. Here comes Amakachi. Up against Mabbott. That won't be a penalty either. <laughs> and incident follows incident. Everyone's appealing for a penalty all the time now after the one that was given. That's really what I meant. The crowd <laughs> are a little bit inclined to do that. Um, Everton have got a corner on the far side. And... Uh, we're back to Andy Hinchcliffe again. Uh, Jackson this time is in a deeper position. The man on the near post is Ablett. And Watson's also there. That's Stewart. That was bad marking again, wasn't it? He's not the tallest of players. They shouldn't leave him unmarked, though. Cleared everyone. That was one of the deep ones, wasn't it? Just went over Darren R. Anderton, who was marking him, and headed it down. Walker did well to hold it. Oh, a late flag, a very late flag. Amakachi was coming back. Oh, yellow card. Presumably that's for kicking the ball away, is it? Graham Stewart. For the booking. But Trevor. Well, you're quite right. He wasn't the one that was offside. Klinsman. Yes, there's a point about that offside. Amakachi was walking back. It was a passive offside on his part. And... The flag went up as if the linesman wasn't sure. Now Tottenham for a handball get a free kick in dangerous territory. Klinsman making a little circular run in the centre. Mavet goes up to join him. Popescu is in there with Calderwood. And it's Klinsman with the volley. And Barbie goes. 
goes in. Oh, Clinton scored a goal like that against Everton at the beginning of the season at White Hart Lane. They must have thought it was deja vu, but they blocked him this time. Horn to Stewart. Good push and header. Stewart, oh, that's not good. Amakachi was down the line. There was an escape up there, you know. Klinsman, that's his speciality. Sheringham and Klinsman, David Watson, Joe Parkinson. Again, though, Everton picking up the pieces. It was headed away, and Joe Parkinson of Ferry Horn had picked up so many of those. Referee is in conversation with another protesting player, but uh, he runs away from it this time, Mr. Hart. And we have ten minutes left, unless, of course, Tottenham equalise. And we're going to be into another half hour. Sheringham, Watson. Howells, Sheringham. Tries to find Barmby. Now, two against two. Daniel Amakachi hits it through to Graham Stewart. And Stewart takes it early. Good header by Amakachi. Graham Stewart electing to hit it early on the half volley. They either fly in and look great or end up like that. Backing in, wasn't it? Sharing him on Watson. Well, the linesman flagged it was. The referee didn't seem inclined to give it. Jackson with a clearance, it's only really carried the ball across to Darren Anderton. Spurs are piling players in there now, they've got to. This is Barmby with the header on. It's Nenecott, saved by Southall's legs from the left back, and on the break, Angus Limpar. They've got four against four. Graham Stewart's had to check as he would have run off the pitch. Inside of his Barry Horn here, number 10. Stewart's available now, that's his cross. And don't forget Neville Southall's save at the other end because it could have been two apiece. Good save from Stuart Nethercott. He was caught forward. They broke down that flank, right flank. A great run by Limpar and a good move. And in the end, Amakachi does win over the Everton fans. How right you are. It was the rebound off Southall that came straight to Anders Limpar. The left back was out of position because he had the shot. From then on, Everton had a man over, and how well they used him. How well they used him. Amakachi again. Neville Southall takes immense credit. This could have been 2-2, make no mistake. Instead, it was 3-1. Jerry Francis is standing there with Ronnie Rosenthal. 
Flags up. Flags up. There was a player offside. Sheringham tangles rather nastily with Unsworth. Referee steps in. Linesman is still flagging. I think, I think he wants the substitution to be notified. Nethercott's going to come off. And Ronnie Rosenthal is going to come on. There will be six minutes for Spurs to save it. Sheringham had a little to do. It was a bit nasty for a minute, and the referee is sorting it out now. While we're watching the goal again, the referee has had strong words with both players. This is Amakachi's header, but Sheringham and Unsworth there that just came to boiling point. Three-one to Everton. Their fans are singing. I thought the substitution of Ronnie Rosenthal might have come earlier in this half. He's now gone on the left side of midfield, and, and David Howes has gone to left back with Barbie going more through the middle. That didn't go out from Dave Watson. This is Darren Anderton. Oh, look at that tackle. Gary Ablett, Amakachi didn't hold it. Spurs pile four in again. Southall, yes. Limpar. Now Rosenthal. Two to meet him. Barry Horn. Great tied it up at the midfield. Chips it forward for Amakachi. Too long. Golly, this ground really is humming now. Forward. Oh, look at the space for Popescu. Everton went to sleep for a moment. Frustration there for Spurs, but I mean, Everton and Joe Rowe must be ecstatic at their performance. They've played superbly, that smile says it all, he knows he's at going to Wembley. Jerry Francis just knows his side have been allowed to play their normal game today, and I think their expression says it all. I shall be asking you in a moment, Trevor, for your Little Woods man of the match, because I know there are one or two very strong candidates on the Everton side, but looking at Joe there, Joe Royal, my mind goes back a year to that agonising moment at Wembley when Oldham were virtually in the final. And you all know what happened then. Mark Hughes interrupted things, and Joe Royal was denied, as he was earlier in his career at Oldham in 1990. Is it third time lucky for Joe Royal in the FA Cup? Look at this. Graham Stewart's got Amakachi inside him and square. Stewart, Amakachi, can he beat Walker? No. Though. Well, they've done well, haven't they? Amakachi's first touch just let him down. It, it took him away from the goal and he couldn't could put it into the empty net then. Graham Stewart having a day of days up there. Mabbott. It'll be a day of days for Evertonians if it stays like this. Flick by Anderton, away by Unsworth. Limpar, touching it back again to Andy Hinchcliffe. Amakachi in the centre. Hinchcliffe's cross comes off a defender. Walker holds it. Well, you can see from your screens how close Everton are to the FA Cup final. Graham Stewart. Everton throw. And how close, 
Joe Royal is after those two heartbreaks. Sheringham. Popescu. Header back by Parkinson. Then Calderwood. Liverpool won a trophy last Sunday. Everton are mighty close to going to Wembley themselves for a final. Quite a week for Merseyside. That happens. Here's Barnley. And it's back to him from Klinsman. In go the tackles. And the interceptions. And the passes. And the release ball to Anders Limpar. Now he's got somebody sprinting up to his left. I think it's Gary Ablett there. And Amakachi is square and unmarked. Amakachi surely. It's a sit back, Gary Ablett, a superb ball across the face, Daniel Amakachi didn't hesitate, kept it well enough below the crossbar, but you know, to see Everton still surging forward at 3-1 just shows that the confidence that they've played with all the game, and I mean, I think now the scoreline probably reflects how the 90 minutes have gone. And while the, uh, when the play breaks down, I'll ask you for your man of the match, Barnby to Sheringham. give it to the whole Everton team, Unsworth has been superb at the back and certainly Parkinson has been very good in midfield, Limpar though has been excellent but the man that I've picked I must say going forward is not this man Daniel Amakachi who's, who's come on to get two goals but the man I think who might well have not played Gerard might not have picked him if he'd had Duncan Ferguson and that is Graham Stewart I think he's been superb, Lincoln play flanks, he and Limpar have caused Spurs defence all sort of problems and of course he's got the goal and set up the third as well. We're in the second minute of stoppage time in the FA Cup semi-final and the Littlewoods man of the match is Graham Stewart of Everton. chance you're not often here in the semi-final now from the cheeky Everton fans easy easy Included Jimmy Hill, but Amakachi was mighty close then. It should have been a hat trick, shouldn't it? But I mean, what a story that would have been to, to come on as late as he did and, and then score a hat trick. Not to be, but he's played his part, and certainly the Everton supporters absolutely alive. There's going to be some celebration, and surely after this performance, they're not going to get involved in that relegation scrap and they're going to pick up sufficient points. This is Graham Stewart. suspended not a bad problem for him to have on by 
Sheringham. Didn't think he was supposed to be playing extra time, but there you go. watch about 14 times so far Robbie Hart oh dear me I wish he'd blown earlier because we've now got supporters coming on the pitch which is precisely the problem oh look dear oh dear they're in the goal mouth and everything this is just the very thing you don't need and I have to say that when a team of 4-1 up and you've been playing 94 minutes I really can't see why the referee can't finish it there can't be that much stoppage time surely a very clear second Graham Stewart the Littlewoods man of the match is mobbed as he leaves the field fans are on the pitch now but it's celebratory rather than threatening and the match will be remembered for the substitute Daniel Amakachi coming on after the unfortunate injury to Paul Rideout and scoring twice the only reply from Tottenham amidst all that was a rather dodgy penalty decision that's our view rather which uh, was converted by Jürgen Klinsmann and one hopes this will not cause trouble that one or two Tottenham supporters have come on the pitch as well and uh, the league ground philosophy with no fences means that the security people do have to keep a very close eye on what happens now don't want to cast any doubt on what's been a celebratory occasion, the men of the moment are Joe Royal and David Watson, and there with Ray Stubbs. Okay, Dave, many congratulations, a heroic performance. Yeah, the lads were different class. Right, right from the first whistle, we uh, we set our stall out and we got amongst them, and uh, we gave them an awful lot of problems, and we could have, you know, been a couple of goals up in the first half. Joe, many congratulations. When the penalty went in, did you start thinking, oh, no? Well, I thought, here we go again. I couldn't see what it was for. Perhaps television will tell me. But you can't tell from that distance. But uh, they responded, came again. To be honest with you, the most problems we had the whole game was when they launched balls at us, although we played all the football. For Everton Football Club, it's a magnificent result. What have, what have you done since you arrived here? Nothing really. The, the good lads, the good players, just expressing themselves. They've settled down, they've got a great spirit. They found a little bit more desire, and you can see the results. They've been terrific. This fellow, too, man of the match today. Mightn't always have been fair to him, you know, with, with games getting him in the side, but he, he was brilliant today. Well, Graham Stewart, your goals just about kept Everton in the Premier League, and now you scored a goal today and made a great performance. Yeah, I thought uh, the team thoroughly deserved to win. Uh, we battled so, so hard. We de desperately wanted to get to the Cup final, and we got nothing more than we deserved today. Joe, now you go to Wembley, and this Everton side, it'll revitalise the whole club, won't it? Well, I hope so. We've got a very important game next Friday against Newcastle. We need the three points even more than that, so let's hope we can go on from there. Many congratulations, thank you very much. Thanks, Ray. Well done. Well, we've seen the slightly ugly face of the game right at the end here, but happily it's been nipped in the bud and, um, and the pitch is now absolutely clear, as you uh, see behind us. Well, I mean, Everton what were outstanding. I mean, they deserved for everything they got. And... For 90 minutes, sensational. You yeah. know, every one of them played brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Yeah. And, and how this is, this is the second goal. It's a mistake. We were praising Walker at half time, but he makes a mistake here. Ryder does really, really well. He wins the challenge, and then he's right in goal. There's only one thing in his mind to hit the target, which he does. Walker nearly redeems himself because he makes a great save, but Stewart, who was man of the match, followed up to stick it in the back of the net. Yeah. yeah, it's extraordinary when you think how that arose. It's interesting just to see the angle and the problem the goalkeeper has. We had a little disagreement over whether that was a good save or not. I think you thought you should have caught it, Alan, but I, I thought that he did well to save it. Can't have seen that, Jimmy. Did you not? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking. We were talking. We were talking before the game that we were expecting the class to come from Tottenham and all the resilience and hard work from Everton. But it was Everton who showed the class as well today. Tottenham showed nothing during the game. Not really. Everton were terrific. 
they played a lot of good football. They've got some good players. I mean, I, I think it was a balance between launching it forward and playing nice football. Yeah. Now, Neville Southall made a, ver a vital save when it was 2-1. It was 2-1. It was two -one. Yeah. And corner, uh, the cross comes in, Bambi flicks on, it's never caught. And Neville does well here because the angles are great, reactions are good, fabulous save at a vital time. Yeah. And the game just changed in that moment. The ball goes up the other end of the field. And this is the simplest goal, maybe, that Amakachi will ever be called upon to score. Oh. Uh, a great day for <laughs> him, which is nice because he's taken the stick from the fans. Everton ball. fans have taken the stick from fans of the other major clubs in the country. And it's lovely to see the joy that they're getting out of the game today. I actually thought his second goal was easier than that, Jimmy. Did this you? one. Uh, yeah, definitely. Well, we, Great yeah. balling from Ablett. Comes in. The you goal. wouldn't even have missed that. The goalkeeper had him he, angled. <laughs> He failed a bit because he could have had a hat trick. I tell you he what, it's, the end, yeah. it's lovely to see when a player's had a rough time and people have laughed at him and said he wasn't worth three million. It's lovely to see him do something at last to justify himself and and regain I, his own confidence. I think he's great for Joe Royal. Yeah. What happened last year? You know, he, he was virtually in the cup final and then Hughes scores a wonder goal at yeah. Wembley and he's out. And he's come back. He's done a great job, Evan. Priority to keep him in the Premier League. But Wembley Cup final for them, great. One well, message for Joe to finish, we sorry. Been, uh, we don't think it was a penalty, Des. I'm terribly sorry. Joe was worried whether it was going to be a penalty. It's time we to go away, Joe. It it's time <laughs> to go. It's time to go away, because there's a lot more sport uh, to come for you, of course, uh, coming up on BBC television. So far, it's been a royal weekend. Royal athlete yesterday, Joe Royal today. Lots more to come. Enjoy it with us.